Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Time for the good news, the bad news, and the other shit. Na, 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 na. We. Ladies and gentlemen, the good news, the bad news, the other shit, and Vic was asking me to bring it, and okay, the good news, the bad news, the other shit. Most, okay, first of all, the bad news, the bad news. It's a lot more corona, y'all. It's a lot but Listen, okay, I don't understand why you guys are not expecting this. You have a contagious disease to which you're doing nothing. <laughs> it's going to keep going up. Everybody in medicine expects it to continue going up. I wouldn't be surprised if every single day you set a new record for new cases for the next 30 days. Right. Until you, set, until you do something, why would it stop? Okay, so it's going to go up. It's going to go up. And what's so bad is that you have still less than 14% of the United States population tested, whereas you really need to have about 70 or 80% tested and a whole bunch of them tested three and four times. Mm. They're talking about doing 50. You need to be 280-something million people. Alexa, what's the population of the United States? According to the CIA World Factbook, oh, as yeah. of 2017, the population of the United States is 327 million people. Okay, so you need to test 327 million people, like, today. How's that? That'll tell you where the virus is. See, in order to know something, you got to do some tests. That's going to tell you where things are and allow you to mobilize resources. So you sort of need to test at this point, the entire United States, okay? Now, if they do 50,000 tests a day, even then, okay, let's say they get it up to 500,000. Alexa, what's 327 million divided by 500,000? 327 million divided by 500,000 is 654. So, it would take you over two years to get it done. Not good, bro. Okay, I'm just... <laughs> wow. I just want you to see. At that rate, it would take you over two years. Over two years. Okay. Now, let me give you the good news. The good news is that there's some early results. They're really early, you guys. They're really early. And, and see, but it's, it's a good thing. Remember I told you one of the ways that they're looking at doing the research a little differently is trying to find some things that are consistent across the viruses, in which case you may be able to make a vaccine or treatment that might knock out a whole bunch of them. So, they and plus they're going to test every product they've ever designed previously too. So, they're getting some preliminary results that look good. Using, doctors will know this, interferon. A different kind of an interferon. Some of you may know interferon because it's one of the treatments that was uh, this recently, well, went through a lot of trials and stuff to treat hepatitis C. So mm. it's one of those treatments that was able to treat chronic viral infection. Hepatitis C, Vic, right. is another one of those ones that tends to stick in people, later causing them liver cancer and liver failure. I feel you. they also one of those ones that you can get from sharing things right. with people. So... Uh, interferon B, now again, I don't know, I'm not a virologist, and I would really want one of them to explain more. But now they have a, a treatment where you inhale it, you inhale it into the lungs in a nebulizer, and it seems to be causing a response. There's also some other 
some other good results for some of the other vaccines. Now, of course, the key to this, and I don't know if they're doing this, the key to this is actually to force people to share the information at some point. See, they're not going to want to do that, but in order to keep, you know, 150 different manufacturers or teams working on this, working consistently, they need to share results so everybody can shift in a particular direction when you get good results. That's, that's the way cancer research works today, you guys. Essentially, all cancer, re all cancer patients are experiments to a degree. What's the likelihood that the big corporations running, rushing for the patent will all throw in their hats to work together? Because it is a business model that they're always used to. Why would they change now? I don't know about that. See, that's part of my issue, Vic. What I do know is that the UK, let me see if I can, I can find it. The UK has already made a preliminary buy, okay? Uh, of like something 39 million All right. vaccines. All right. So the so the UK has already bought just based on they made a deal with one of the com, com, uh, com, one of the companies to already purchase some okay. huge amount of vaccines which are not even developed yet. Okay, they're not even developed yet. In the UK, because people are trying to get in on it early, right? Which is one of the, my fears. See, the part that's typically not sped up is that you need to give it to like twenty thousand people, and then check them like every two weeks, every month. You know, spreading it out and this whatever. Yeah, for like a year. Yeah. How do you speed that up? You just decide you're not going to do it. Right. See what I'm saying? So there's no speeding that up, because that's the protocol is time. But give you, it and wait. But but I got to give it to you. You brought some good news. Yeah, there's some treatment yeah. stuff yeah. coming. Earlier, because in my world of pediatrics, you know, if you ask me how long does it take to get a vaccine, I'm going to say five to ten years. Absolutely. And that's being very hopeful. A uh, bunch of stuff like HIV, they've been working on over 40 years, right? Right. Nothing, right? Right. right. Okay. So remember that. So a bunch, it's not quite like that. You also have some vaccines like measles and other things that are like 90 some percent, right. 98 or whatever percent. You can Google it effective. So you can look those up. But the point is, back at the ranch, you're going to have new cases coming. You, know, you might as well get used to that. And specifically in those areas where they were most, most cavalier. Right now, uh, People are getting hit in the rural parts of the United States. You right. know, small towns. Like, and I posted it about a small town where they were saying, you know, please pray for us because the whole town is being affected, okay? Now, are they also using the reference that they relaxed or they went open and said, hey, we didn't, we were not practitioners of wearing the mask, you know what I'm saying? Or are they just saying we're getting hit and we don't know why? Well, those are just from individuals who are crying out now in desperation. Right. The, but the point being, I can't name in the whole United States anyone who did it correctly. No one. No one actually followed the guidelines. Absolutely. No one. Absolutely. No one. Not California. No one. No. Some did better than others. They relaxed. Right. But... No one. So if no one does anything, one of the things as a practitioner that gets frustrating is that you have to sort of accept the idea of letting people die so that people will wake up. Now, I'm a county-trained doctor, L.A. County Hospital, so I'm used to death, okay? I'm just not used to it coming this way, and I know something else. You ain't used to death, <laughs> okay? Right. You ain't used to death. So something's going to have to change. I can also tell you that studies are showing right now that 45%, up to 45% of the U.S. population says they're not going to take a vaccine anyway. Right. If that actually turns out to be true, which it won't, you'll never get ahead of the virus. No. You'll be fighting it for the next 10 years. Okay, 
So if that's that, but that's not going to actually. That's not going to true. Be true. Right now, forty five percent. That'll go down to fifteen percent once all the people start dying. Once all the people start dying and they see them all around them, watch that long ass line for vaccines get longer. Okay, yeah. that's yeah. what's gonna happen. A bunch of people gonna die. Then the line's gonna get real, real long for the vaccine. Then people are gonna be willing to take anything that you think is helpful. Right. Okay, it's gonna be just like you see in the TV shows, okay? They can go from being nothing to taking something and then begging for anything. Now, okay? let me ask you something, because you go through this, or you have been through this. This is gonna be doubled down with the flu season. And oh, how they'll be And how they're gonna be able to handle determining the difference between the flu the, the the features are going to be similar, overlapping, and who you could get you, both. Who do you actually prioritize? You might get both. Thank we don't you. know that you don't get both. That's what I'm saying, man. You might have flu and corona at the same time. COVID nineteen and you, and you flu get, season is expected to come the same. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. And I'm just just this is hypothetical. I know everybody's going to sit back and say, it. if kept if, if if Captain Dada. You know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Captain Dudda. The stable genius. <laughs> right. Implored the whole base to say mass. Would there still be a rebellion anti-mass, or would we be in a better place had they everybody just said, look, the leader of the Grand Fuba, Captain Dudda, said, let's do this, let's do it. Would there be a better place, or were we going to get here anyway? Well, you would have been better had you used masks. That's obvious. Okay, in other words, let me, okay, let me break it down to common sense. You have a disease that's contagious, of which you have no effective treatment. Yes, it is. Wouldn't it be common sense, the best thing, the, on, the only thing you have to combat the disease is staying away from each other? Am I right? Man. There is nothing else. Man. You can shake beads and do prayers. Okay, all right. You understand? So the only thing, the only thing Absolutely. you have to combat this virus with right now is staying away from each other. There is nothing else. And I'm not putting down all the people who are into health foods and all that because I believe that being in a healthy condition helps you survive. But if you think you're going to do a detox, or eat some herbs or some bullshit and survive this, good luck to you. Okay? Because as far as I know, vegans get cancer and die like everybody else. They can't even point to any data that shows you live longer. Okay? They can't even point to that. All right? We just assume that living better will lead to longer life. Right. But there's not real data on right. that. Right. Okay? I'm just making that clear to you. For right. people who like data. They can't go to data and say, oh, it says we're going to live longer. Let me ask you this then. Here's the last one. It's a quick yes or no. Would it be, would it, would we go in upheaval if the president was in a different place? Let me say it right. Captain Dudda. And he said martial law. And martial law says we're clamping down hard. Would that be the, in the best interest of the health and welfare of everybody? No, I think the best thing to do is to educate. Okay, the best thing to do is to educate the public appropriately. And then once educated, they will do a better response. If you look in Japan, which is still having another surge like everybody. Because remember, I told you nobody has done this right. Right, right. Absolutely no one. They all relaxed. They all relaxed, stupidly. So everybody avoided what they thought. Everybody essentially sacrificed working people for money. That's why they all did it. The yeah. universal reason of why people went back to work, the universal reason. It's for economic I mean, reasons. That's right. So in other words, they went back to work to save the rich people money. Absolutely. Worldwide. Japan, everywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So they sacrificed you to go back to work. Okay. What's coming is the Great Depression Part 2. I hate to say it, but right now you're faced with it and the clock is ticking. You're facing record evictions, record oh, going to be kicking transfers in. Yeah. from 
to people to becoming homeless. Yep. Record numbers of people. Many of you are going to have to get ready for people to move in to your house. Family and relatives, because people are not understanding. That's why I want to be the first to warn you to get ready. This is going to be the Great Depression Part 2. Some industries will never recover. I hate to be the voice of doom, but it's already being talked about. The people with money are pulling back their money, getting ready to buy up all your shit. Because let me remind you that in times of desperation like this, the rich get richer. Okay? Anybody who got any money saved up knows they can buy some property. Okay? I'm going to buy a car. Finally. Okay? But I'm going to wait till it's the worst, worst time. And I'm thinking somewhere around this time next year, there'll be so many car discounts. You guys, I'm going to buy a used Prius with damn near no miles. Watch what I get it for. Yeah. Watch what I get it for. So I'm warning you, that's the bad thing. The Great Depression Part 2 is coming. Some of you are on fixed incomes who thought you had it tight are going to realize you got it good. Because <laughs> if you got a fixed income, it's better than no income. That's what's coming. The government is going to have to take action that is unprecedented. As I told you, I'm telling you right now, we need to bail out people. I suggest that we identify the 50 worst places in the country and start with them. But we're going to need to stop income tax totally, except for the most affluent. We're yeah. going to have to stop all income tax. In fact, you're going to have to have welfare type assistance nationwide you think they're going to have another for at least three to four years because of what's coming what's the chance you think of another financial assistance on the tail of the one that they said hey, oh, about to run you're out you're going to get financial assistance I can guarantee you that yeah. the question I have is how much my guess would be it's going to be too little too late because that's the historical reference I've never seen it done right in the proper amounts, in the proper time, ever. There is no precedent for that. Yeah. Okay, but there is precedent for you getting some relief very late. Hey, you remember uh, Too Big to Fail? And they built Welfare for the rich. <laughs> right. Let me, let That's, me. And you notice that it's times like this when the Republicans become socialists. The Republicans always were socialists. So wait, they're socialists for them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, bail them out. Because <laughs> they're, you know what too big the fail really insinuates? Is that they're important and you're not. That's what that really means. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can it be too poor to fail? Too, it should be too poor to die. <laughs> See, that's what I'm only How saying. about that? Too poor to die. Too okay. big to fail versus too poor to die. So... Uh, Will they call it a bailout or a rescue mission? That's the difference. The wording. It should be their duty. Right. We should give it a term that what is. We should give it a term that applies to, that that actually seems to state that they're doing what they should do, and that it's not charity. See, yeah. it's it should be some term for it, that should be that that they're doing what they should do, and that it is absolutely not charity. You know what? You say the right things, bro. Too bad they don't sound like you. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm just letting I you get know. too big. You better, I better start watching my food. <laughs> anyway. All right, man. In terms of Black Lives Matter, Ooh. protests are going on right now, supposedly. I go. haven't seen it, but all over the United States, there's supposed to be a record turnout. Uh, for people, we can go try to take a look, Vic. Hey, look. And see, have you seen any? But it's supposed to be right now going on. Thousands of protests across the United States related to this. Hey, you know what? Let's see. The miseducation of America now is going to get the real education. How do you feel like now that you are part of teaching America? You never thought of it that way, right, Mario? That you're a no. part of, we, we're now having to teach you. 
no. you know, uh, you know, we're beyond that big plan from Jim Crow. That they never saw that. Oh damn, the oppressed people are going to teach us how we should think and do and act. Oh my God, what <sighs> should we do? We listen, can say, Look, listen. That's all you have to do, Mark. Just listen. Hey, the education is there. Hey, Vic, it's it's certainly proof. That we don't necessarily volunteer, but that we're chosen. <laughs> hey, look. Because you chose it too, right? I mean, here we are. Hey, listen, man. We find ourselves in this position. Yeah. Never thought we would be in this position, but yeah. here we find ourselves. Yeah. So I guess in that sense, it means we are chosen. The, the, you know, they call it string theory in, in astronomy and that whole thing. The strings are, are, are connected here because you can't separate the Black Lives Matter movement from people who are oppressed, disenfranchised, and when people don't have money, everybody's in the same boat. And there is no breakage here. So the part that's happening is, is just terrible timing. And this is way bigger, I hate to say this, than Captain Dud Dud's administration. So what I'm forecasting for Mario is that one day somebody's gonna come in this studio that's part of Captain Dud Dud's administration. And Mario's first question will be, notice I'm not saying. <laughs> I was saying, bend over and spread your cheeks so we can Dude, see if you can wink. You're just wrong, man. You're wrong. See if we can get that wink. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm just say it. In Black Lives Matter, efforts to defund the police continue. Once again, I'm going to take a moment to attempt to define that. I had a discussion with a friend of mine who lives on the west side, and I said, essentially, think of it as that we want our ne neighborhoods policed the way yours are. I live in View Park, California. It is considered, Victor's the one who told me, to be the most affluent community in the entire United States for black folks. Yeah. In other words, when it comes to black people, the community I live in is the most affluent black community in the entire United States which means that you ain't safe here. Because <laughs> I've been jacked by the police one block from my house. That's what it tells you in the most affluent black community, you ain't safe. So I told one of my colleagues who lives in Santa Monica, I said, would you, how would you feel that every time your son went out, you had to be worried about the police? Your daughter. Defund the police means change the role of the police. Police should not be asked to handle any domestic violence or any mental illness calls at all. We should have special teams of trained professionals to handle those. And police shouldn't handle them at all. Police should be limited to those situations that require some degree of force or potentially. And then they need to be retrained. When I say defund the police, I essentially say that the racism is so rampant they essentially need to fire all policemen everywhere and then rehire. And to get that rehiring, you should have to take a test and have a psychological survey evaluation. And if you don't pass that, you should not go back to your job. There are plenty of young people coming out of college right now, male and female, who will do wonderful in these new positions. We would change the nature of policing and change the nature of the people who act as those providers at the same time, at the exact same time. This is what we need to do. So defunding the police doesn't mean no police. It means restructuring your investments to provide a different kind of service. That's what it means. We don't need you to patrol our community like the uh, invading uh, marauders or the oppressors, police. We don't need that in our community. And we and I certainly don't want to pay for that with our own tax funds. So that needs to go. So let me remind people what defund the police means. It actually means a commitment to a new kind of policing. For most white folks, it actually means having the same policing you've had and benefit from all these years being applied to people of color. What's the chance? I got to play devil's advocate because I believe in the business infrastructure that exists that's proportioned to the people that says you're trying to take away that money line that also is a, a supplement to people's income and extra, extra, go, extra, extra. Got to go, got to go. Okay, so, so, when they <laughs> de go. so when they defund 
Is it suburban defunding? Urban defunding? Everywhere. Okay, now hold on. So are you <laughs> wait, are you wait racist cops who are so <laughs> arrogant that wait a minute. threatening to quit? Wait a minute. You can quit now. Wait a minute. Now remember. Quit early. Now remember. Get goodbye. You, you, you're also represented by your districts, by assemblymen, congressmen. There's a money flow. So to know how that money's going, because what you don't want, Mario, is the, oh, yeah, we're going to defund, all right. We're going to take money out of your district. And so to monitor no, that. No, no, no. Don't take the money out. <laughs> right. I Repurpose just, the no, money. No, no, I'm not saying no, ever no, no, take no, any no, money no, out. No, no, I'm being devil's advocate. Let me play this. Let me play this. See, my whole thing is that once they hear you holler and scream, you do need oversight and management. Remember what the rule is here. Follow the money. And that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. That's point. never changed. That is going. So even when you ask for the thing, yeah, you're going to, you are yeah. going to, okay, let's assume that you're dealing with the same people, okay? Why would it be any different? Thank you're going you. to ask for stuff. You're going to have to make sure you get it. That's right. If you're stupid enough to ask and then stop looking, then, then you you'll problems. get screwed. Yeah. Yeah, don't be that stupid. There you go. I buddy. think we've gone past that. Yeah. Except in the South. <laughs> don't stop. Stop, wait, stop. Wait a minute. They're Time still out. pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Now, when you say this, let, let's make it clear. <laughs> the leadership, the people. They chose the, listen, the people for every dumb cool. racist leader, there there's a community that elected him. <laughs> wait. Okay, so you can trace I'm every you. dumb Probably racist rescue. leader back to a racist, segregated community. Yes. So that's they got who they deserve. You voted. You know, I hate to say, maybe Kentucky deserves Mitch McConnell. Maybe. You, you know, mean, maybe they may, do. No, no, it's not maybe. Maybe Florida deserves their elected people. Yes. Yeah. You know, because they keep choosing to elect them. And there is a majority that always systemically, by the numbers, is always the fight you have to. The do right majority will hopefully do right, but when it just is broken down by ethnicity, then that's when people take advantage of their power, whether it's right or wrong. They say, this is how it's going to play. So, yeah, Mitch and Kentucky and Tennessee and all those neighboring, hopefully you guys will do the right thing. But as Mario and I know, it's an election year. And when election year comes, there's money that got to be flowing. And people will go like this. I'm pushing your issues aside. You got issues with Black Lives Matter, push it aside. The money chain. And let me just say this also, Mark. All that money chain is not just going through <clears throat> communities that's non-black. We got some hoarders in the, in, in the African-American community going like, pay me. You know this. Yeah. All right. Like I said, we all get to now think about our own personal roles and how we're going to be handling this. And that is no different for us here, personally and with Pac Stereo. Thank you. We're deciding what we're going to do, and we're trying to do that yeah. right now. Welcome to the Reality Masterclass. Which brings us to the ongoing Trump debacle. Oh. The president is at war with science. <laughs> I can't even repeat the stupid things. Here which goes go. to me, again, to speak to the stupidity of his supporters. If you're still making excuses for your support of Trump, you're an idiot and an asshole, okay? So... Here's the man once again. Remember I told you back in the beginning when you made excuses for his lying. I told you his lying would kill people. He is the most documented liar in all of world history. There's no one who even closely approaches him. It's a record he will hold for damn near eternity. Because no one will ever attempt to lie as much as this man lies. And now you get to see firsthand how his so lives are killing people. So, so, so those of you who made excuses for him, this is your responsibility, and this is why you are part of the problem. All you Trump supporters, all those apologists who still are making excuses for Trump, he's killing people with his lies, and now you're part of it. I noticed that a bunch of you Trump supporters have simply gone quiet. That's not the same as renouncing your previous stupid mistakes. Quiet? Yeah. Uh, I they, thought they shut were, up. No, no, they're hiding, bro. They hide. They hide big time. Where are you? Oh, yeah. So take your head out your ass oh, well, and stop being a coward. Oh, oh. And instead of hiding, say you were wrong because you supported Trump. 
a bunch of you. Yeah. Sorry, sick, sad <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> wait, wait. Are you exhaling, my man? I am. You are exhaling. Next. Okay. Now, hold on. So, breathe. I want you to breathe. Let, let it flow. There you go. Who saw? I think my appropriate of concern fits the fact that people are dying. People say, Mario, you're very upset. I said, well, that's my concern. Yeah. Is commiserate with the amount of death. I think all the doctors that get up there and go, oh, perhaps the outcomes oh, are, are now being more than we could oh, have anticipated you know while looking at the data and that while that outcome may be a shock, <laughs> we are preparing avenues of intervention Damn, man, you that pretty good. look forward to uh, coming into play shortly. Damn, are you And we would advise you to pay attention to your local... See, the doctors... Doctors are amazing. They can talk for 20 minutes and not say a goddamn thing. Okay, that's useful. I have been. I sat there next to a bunch of them. That's why I never let, for 30 years, anybody do my patient education. Never. Never. Not even the people I liked. Okay, because none of them did it the way I wanted it done. You know, you, that imitation Period. that you did, bro, you know what? Why didn't know you had skills like that, bro. <laughs> so another thing, the, the good news is Trump's niece married Trump. I got the audio book. It's pretty interesting. Mm. The other book, her, she's able to go get it. Right. It makes him look like the obvious asshole he's been looking like all these years that a bunch of you still don't get. Right. That's why I want to sell you a bridge in Brooklyn. Okay? <laughs> and if you're going to go to Trump for your COVID treatment decisions... You're really an asshole idiot. Hey, hey, Mario. And we need less of them anyway. Hey, <laughs> wonder if all of a sudden, say one day, I'm not putting it out there. In the next week or so, even less. The breaking news is Black Lives Matter has been carved into the grass in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> They're going to store Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> That's our dream. Storm Mar-a-Lago. Storm Mar-a-Lago. Hey, bro. Hey, you know what would happen at that point, right? It says, where's my security? Storm Mar-a-Lago. Storm Mar-a-Lago. Where's my security, right? So you know it's happening. Oh, oh my God. Barbarians at the gate. Barbarians at the gate.